I'm standing here right now in front of you. Judge me. I'm proud of every inch. I'm proud of every second. Do I have flaws? Yes. Do I work on them once they're identified? Yes. Am I constantly trying to improve the namesake, the IPO value of my name? I, yes, I am. The small things mean as much to me as the large things because those small things add up to be more and more and more. They create the big thing. You know, the big thing isn't just one. It's trained for, it's fought for. In the training, in the gym, you know, in those moments of character testing, of morality and integrity, that everyone seems to fail these days. Who stands up, picks up the trash when no one's looking? Who does that? The same person that's on top of the podium later in life. They go hand in hand. It's a heartbeat, guys, at the end that really wins it. At the toppest level of competition, everyone's got the talent. Everyone's got the perseverance. Everyone has it all, and everyone wants it. But somebody wants it more. Someone's heartbeat is constantly beating for it. Not just when people are watching, not just in training, but when they're sleeping, they're dreaming of it. They it's a constant cycle. How do you know when you're on the right path? When the small nuances in life that people don't really value, they consider a nuisance, you consider them as valuable as the big events when everyone is watching. When you perform to a certain level when no one's watching, you build a, a level of excellence about yourself that stands the test of time of no matter what happens in front of you. You are character true, code of conduct, pure. I know who you are because you're the same person in adversity, in victory, in defeat. You're the same motherfucker. It doesn't get turned off ever. Excellence. I said before, guys, is not not an accident in somebody's life. It's a habitual habit that's trained and perfected and then remastered and remastered every single day in everything they do. You know you're on the right path when these small things, the momentum builders, hold value to yourself. When you stamp your name on something and it means something, come check it out, I did this. Not hoping someone doesn't see it. The fact you know it exists is enough. Live in the moment. Stop trying to be alive and fucking start living. Death is coming. When it comes, are you ready for it? Are you gonna stand up and dance at that fucking celebration? Or are you gonna be wishing, oh my God, because that's permanent, man. You can't change it. You can't reverse the clock. Try to make amends and do it right. You don't have time to say you're sorry and make it right. No, it's over with. That day comes. It's like studying for a test. That day is going to be tested. Do you pass or fail? It's a huge accountability of today. Just like I tell you guys, you know, if you want to get in shape and stuff, you need an end state goal. You need a marathon you're running in 90 days, a competition or something that makes today accountable. I got 90 days to make it right. I can't blow off today's responsibility to tomorrow because I lose one 90th a chance to cross that finish line of the marathon, to get on stage and have a chance of winning it, to create a dream into reality. I got one 90th a chance today. I can't blow it up. I got accountability today. Death is the ultimate accountability. It's only fearful if it comes and you're not ready yet. That's when it's fearful. When you haven't been able to say goodbye to somebody. When you didn't live in the moment with a friend or a loved one or family member. And you no longer have time, let them know what you think. That's when it becomes scary. You know, my dogs and, and, and my family and stuff, I love them to death. Every minute with them, I, I embrace, I love it. I never want it to end, but it will end. We come into this world by ourselves. We leave this world by ourselves. We had the opportunity to engage while here, but we leave alone. 
We leave with the memories and the embraces and the love and the experiences of life. We take that with us. And if we do it right, we leave footprints of legacy and motivation for others to follow and take the most out of life. Alive, but also living. Not so fearful for death that we become a self paralysis in our own state, trying to preserve the inevitable. It doesn't work that way, guys. I look in the mirror. Anxiety fills me. Stressed out. Because I'm like, man, there's not enough time. I'm out of time. I'm running out. I haven't become the person I want to be yet. And I don't know how much more time's left. Maybe today's the only day I got. I don't know. But there's so much to do and so little time. That's all I keep thinking about. I never sit back and settle and, you know, and relax on past fucking accomplishments or anything else. Bullshit. I live in the fucking present or the future. Never live in the past. I never relish in anything I used to do. All oh, that shit's great. I'm not proud of it. That shit is, it is maybe who I am now strong enough to tackle the next endeavor, the next endeavor, the next endeavor. Always looking forward, never looking back. I can sit here and be your mom, guys, be your buddy and say, you know what? It doesn't matter if you win or lose. It's how you play the game. It's all about making sure you have fun in life. Yeah. Now, money can't buy happiness. Yeah, well, being broke can't buy it either, you know? So happiness either exists or doesn't exist. You know, call me materialistic, but I think if you're happy and you have money, it's a lot more happier than if you're happy and broke. And if you're going to go and play the game and lose or play the game and win, I think it's more fun to play and to win. So why not do that? So I can sit here and tell you about, you know, you know, all the things you should do to keep motivated, not burn out, or I can open up my voices in my head to you and tell you what they think. Publicly, let them all out to you. Let you know how crazy my fucking mental capacity is at times. Because when I wake up and I look at myself in the mirror, I see failure every day. I do. I'm like, man. You're not there yet. I don't know if you got any more time left. You better, you better make today count. That's what I think. You know, some people find that a disease. Some people find that a blessing. But these voices speak two different paths in life. I'm going to explain both paths. And I'm going to ask you which one is harder. That's what I love, man. When, you, when someone achieves something, you know, and all these people you know, go run into him, um, you know, to interview him and stuff, but along the way, no one, no one gave a shit, the motherfucker couldn't get arrested, not a pot of piss, and no one gives a fuck, but then he achieves it, now they all wanna fucking find out who he's all, who he is, you know? But by the time they go to interview the guy, the guy's already 15 miles ahead on next endeavor, because that's where life is, the pressures, the situations that you can't buy, you have to earn, and keep on going. My life's been that way the entire way. I find some success in one thing and, and, I, and I get scared of success. I do, man. As soon as I find success in something, with sports, with military, you know, rows to levels that, you know, are great and stuff, and fitness and everything, you know, it's just like, I gotta get on to something else, man. I can't get caught up in that emotion. Because nothing can grow from that. It's failure where you learn, man. When you lose everything, do you value the taste of the meal you used to have? You know, this, this, this storm that hit New York, Sandy. I mean, it's like, why does it have to go down like that for you to value the commodities of life? 9-11, the towers hitting, why does that have to happen for us to be patriotic? Why does a storm like Sandy have to go down for you to go over and see how your neighbor's doing? Lend a hand, why, why couldn't that happen on a good day? Why is it when it is a good day, we don't push anymore? Why is it that the greatest hour of an individual is usually right after their worst hour of despair? Why can't the greatest hour be right after the greatest hour? It's a gambling problem, man. Start losing focus on what you're in it for. And what you, start what you start debating inside your head is, is 
oh, am I in it for the accomplishment of it or the reward of it? Very different. The accomplishment is, is the creation, the work of, of developing something, or are you in it for the accolades, the money, the success that comes from it? One will keep feeding you, the other one won't. I think you know which one that is. Fear and love are derivatives of motivation. I mean, if you're fearful of something, that if you continue going down this path, that fear is not just a, an idea, it's a fucking reality soon enough. And oh, by the way, guess what's in the, that equation? Time. He's given a year. We're giving you, your son will graduate. Well, that could be even sooner. A time before a fear becomes a reality or motivates you to get off your ass and change the fucking direction of your life. If you don't put time into the current equation of where you are and the fear of what could be if you continue that path, you will not move off the path. The other path is love. The love for something that's so strong. It requires somebody to go out of the way for another or for themselves. Love can also be success. When that little kid hit that double and dro drove in that run to win the game for his team, he felt success. He felt a taste of something that he hadn't tasted before. And it felt good. Now, damn, he wanted to feel some more of that. And he knows by working hard, he can taste more of that. So it motivates him to go down a certain path because he's tasted what's out there. Where well, the one example is that that fear will become a reality. In this situation, it's reverse. That dream and success, I'm gonna meet. I'm gonna create it. All I have to do is sweat for it, work for it, study for it, drive for it, believe in it. Never take no for example and never fucking give up. If you guys don't have a love for something, a fear for something, and by the way, most fears, if you really look at your life, guys, most fears, if you confront those fears, it's like a magnet. Being the same magnet, they push away from each other. If you dive into that fear and face it head on, it's gonna you're gonna be repulsed by it. It's gonna push you away. And where's it gonna push you? The exact direction of what you love. I swear to God. If you overcome and face a fear head on, it will drive you exactly in the direction of what you love. If you don't believe me, look at your own life. I'm sure you've done it multiple times. But without a fear, guys, and without a love, combined into an equation of time, you can never produce motivation or any kind of internal drive. The gym is great because we get those immediate results. We see them, we love them, we believe in it. We taste that success, that love. We want more of it, more of it. So we keep going back in there, back in there, and back in there, and back in there. We love that. We're the same person there as we are out here. And if we tasted something good here, why are we neglecting to taste it here? We're gonna grow this year, man. We're gonna make it all happen. Greg Plitt, help me stay fit. Thanks for watching.